Okay, our title for today is the uh, pH of a weak base. And so what we are going to do is we're going to find the pH of a 15 molar solution of ammonia. And we are given the KB of 1.8 times 10 to the minus fifth. Now remember, for a weak base and a weak acid, um, finding the pH of those solutions is a little bit more tricky because, of course, at equilibrium, well, they reach equilibrium. They don't completely dissociate. They only slightly dissociate. And so depending upon their K value, um, that is going to tell us how much will be dissociated at equilibrium. And from that, we can figure out the pH of those solutions. The tricky thing about a weak base problem is that if you recall the dissociation equations, um, weak bases actually react with water to give us hydroxide solution, I mean to give us hydroxide ion in solution. So if we were going to write the base dissociation for this thing, it looks like this. Ammonia and um, reacts with water let's make this a Q this is a liquid and when it reacts with water it's going to give us ammonium plus hydroxide Okay, so the number one tricky thing about weak base problems is that they don't simply dissociate, but they interact with water. Water picks up, no it does not, the ammonia picks up a hydrogen from the water to give us the ammonium ion, and that is the conjugate acid of this weak base plus hydroxide. Okay, now this is a pH problem. Is there hydrogen ion in here at all? No, there is no hydrogen ion in a weak base dissociation. The closest thing we've got to hydrogen is hydroxide. And so this, finding the concentration of hydroxide at equilibrium will then give us a backdoor way of getting to the hydrogen ion concentration and then from that finding the pH of the solution. Okay, so there is the dissociation reaction. Alright, and so the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write the expression for that thing. Okay, this is a weak base, so it's not going to be a Ka, it's going to be a Kb. So, um, no, Kb is equal to ammonium hydroxide. Once we know the 
hydroxide ion concentration, we can convert it into the hydrogen ion con con concentration. And so, we're going to set up an ice diagram. I drew this way too big, so let's do this thing again. It's a liquid. Does it appear in the expression? No. Forget about it. <clears throat> What is my initial concentration of ammonia? 15. Initially, I have nothing. I have nothing. I'm going to lose. Okay, these are in a one to one, so I'm going to gain. I'm going to gain. I'm going to do is I'm going to plug these things into my equilibrium expression. And I'm going to actually set it up next to the KB. So I've got 1.8 times 10 to the minus fifth is equal to x times x over 15 minus x. My kV is tiny. This actually lies pretty far to the left. So for now, we're going to call this negligible. We'll check it to make sure. X times X is X squared. Okay, if we do our math here, we end up getting a value for X x is equal to 1.6 times 10 to the minus second. Okay, great. We've solved for x. Okay, and this is where you cannot, you cannot be brainless. You have to be cognizant of what X is. In this case, you guys, what does X stand for? X is the hydroxide ion concentration at equilibrium and the ammonium ion concentration at equilibrium. Okay, so it is the hydroxide and the ammonium. Okay, they're not asking us about the ammonia concentration at equilibrium. So we don't need to take this number and plug it in to find the equilibrium concentration. What are we trying to find? We're trying to find pH. And so this number is going to get us there knowing that this number represents the hydroxide ion concentration. Now, really quickly, so that we're sure that we did okay by calling that 
negligible, we need to do a little percent dissociation here. And so we are going to take the part that has dissociated. So um, the part that has dissociated, we have 1.6 times 10 to the minus second over the whole, which is 15.0 molar, times 100. And that should, that is going to give us our percent dissociation. And as long as that number is less than 5%, then we were okay to throw out that minus x. Okay, well, I know for a fact it is, but you guys do it on your calculator and see what you get. All right, and I'm going to clear this board now, and we're back at this right here. So, x is equal to the hydroxide ion concentration and the ammonium ion concentration. And that is equal to 1.6 times 10 to the minus 7. Okay. So I can go about this now in two different ways. I'm going to need my cup. I can use KW is equal to H plus times OH minus, and I can use this to find the hydrogen ion concentration. So it would be 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14 is equal to hydrogen ion So if I just divide 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14th divided by 1.6 times 10 to the minus 2nd, that will give me my hydrogen ion concentration. And if I do it that way, Is one 1.8. Okay, there's my pOH. 
Now, how do I convert that into a pH? I say 14.0 minus 1.8 is going to give me 2, 3, 2, 1. Okay, so I can do it this way, and I get a pH of 12.2. Or I could have done it this way, and then of course I would find the negative log pH is equal to the negative log of 6.3 times 10 to the minus 13, which is going to give me the same answer. But the bottom line is, the most important thing you've got to keep in mind, you guys, is that when you're doing a weak-based problem, your X that you solve for using your ice diagram is going to be the hydroxide ion concentration, not the hydrogen. And then you have to convert it to hydrogen ion concentration one of two ways. Either using the KW and getting there, or finding the pOH from it and then subtracting that from 14 to give you.